I want you to try this. Search the word browsers on Google. The top result, that's actually written by me. And half a million people will visit it this year. Which is wild, because for years, browsers were invisible, just a tool to get you to the internet. But now, three new browsers are changing that. And what they represent isn't just better browsing, it's a whole new way of working. Let's start with the one that shows what the future of browsing actually feels like. We all know the research chaos. 10 tabs open over here, notes over there, screenshots over here. It's a complete mess. This first new browser, Comet, simplifies all of that. You can ask the browser to summarize an article, compare products, or pull key takeaways directly from the page you're on. Okay, watch this. This is where it gets interesting. Comet is agentic, meaning it can actually click, scroll, and fill forms out for you. It's like having an assistant in your browser. It's actually crazy the first time you see it. The first time you watch it take over, testing promo codes and adding items to your cart, that's where it feels like the future. It's not perfect. It misclicks sometimes, and it's definitely slow, but it comes in handy at times, especially on clunky sites like government portals or tools with horrible user experiences like meta ads. So how can it do all of this? Well, Comet is the browser, but the brain behind it is perplexity. Sort of like how you have the browser, Chrome, that uses Google as the search engine. But perplexity is better than Google, especially for research. It combines AI answers, but gives you all of the links and sources where it got its information from. So with Comet, you get all of this for free. The agent mode, which no other browsers offer on the free tier, perplexity built in, and the assistant. So if you want the best free AI browser experience on the market, this is it. And if you do ever want to push it further, you can upgrade perplexity for deeper research and more citations. Though the free tier already covers almost everything. And when you download Comet with the link below, you'll get a free month of Perplexity Pro just to try it out. So Comet shows you what an AI browser can do, but what happens when an AI browser knows you? Like, really knows you? That's where the second browser, ChatGPT Atlas, comes in. OpenAI's browser built around memory and personalization. You'll get why it's unique once you see how my wife Andra and I actually use ChatGPT every day. We each have two paid ChatGPT accounts, one for personal and one for work, and we've been using them daily for the past two years. On the paid plan, ChatGPT can remember things about you. Not just how you write, but how you think. It learns what you care about, how you make decisions, and the kind of answers you actually find useful. Over time, that makes it feel personal in a way that no other AI does. So when Atlas launched, we were immediately curious. For the first time, we could browse the web with an AI that already knew how we think. It quickly became a shortcut. We could ask it things like, would I like this? And it would answer based on what it already knew about us. Atlas isn't so much about research as it is personalization. In any input box, you can highlight text and refine or replace it directly using AI. No copy pasting needed. And like Comet, Atlas is agentic. It can take actions for you, but those features are unlocked only on the paid tier. And that said, in our testing, we found that Atlas's agentic mode actually underperformed Comet. Comet uses the internet in search better than ChatGPT, and because of that, we found that it just gave us better results. After using Atlas a bit, it hit me. This isn't just another AI browser. It's really the evolution of the ChatGPT desktop app. If you're already using ChatGPT, especially on a paid plan, Atlas feels instantly familiar, only smarter. You can start by talking to ChatGPT and then jump into a website all without leaving the chat. So if Comet is your free AI assistant, Atlas is your paid option that actually knows you and works with you. That's why we recommend it for anyone that wants the most personalized browsing experience possible, as long as you're willing to pay for it. But personalization isn't everything. There's a third AI browser that takes a totally different approach, built not around memory, but rather productivity. So my default browser the past few years has been Arc, but it's mainly because of the sidebar. It turned your browser into a workspace, every project in its own space instead of piles of tabs and random bookmarks. It helped me stay focused and actually move faster. But the browser company, the team behind Arc, decided the sidebar concept just wouldn't go mainstream. It had diehard fans like MKBHD and us, but it never broke out of that productivity niche. 
So they started fresh, building a new browser from the ground up centered around AI called Dia. Then Atlassian acquired them for 610 million. And after a year of users begging for Arc Sidebar back, they're finally rebuilding it into DF. It's been a long time. The new sidebar looks familiar, but it's still a work in progress, missing the built-in folders, the merge of tabs and bookmarks, and those focus spaces that made Arc feel just so fluid. As for the AI features, well, their built-in AI chat isn't as advanced as Comet or Atlas. It doesn't have deep memory or full agentic controls yet, but it's a lightweight companion that helps you interact with the pages you're on. And its most interesting feature is Dia skills. Think of them like mini automations that you can trigger right from chat. With a simple slash command, you can summarize a document, draft an email, or find a discount all without leaving the page. It's not full agentic control like Comet or Atlas, but it's a smart middle ground. Quick focused actions that make everyday tasks faster. So with Dia bringing back the sidebar from Arc and layering AI within the browser, it's quickly becoming the best browser for people who care about structure, focus, and flow. It's the productivity browser. So with all these options, what do I actually use day to day? Well, I can't let go of Arc's sidebar. It's how I stay focused and organized, especially at work. So here's how that looks day to day. I keep Arc open on one side. It's still my main workspace because of the sidebar. On the other half, I switch between ChatGPT Atlas and Comet, depending on the task at hand. If I'm writing or brainstorming, I use Atlas. It already knows my tone and context. If I'm doing deep research, I swap to Comet. It consistently gives me the most up-to-date information and sources I can trust. I'll make Dia my primary browser if the browser company brings back Arc Sidebar truly to Dia, and I'll still use Atlas and Comet on the side. In a perfect world, these three browsers would just merge together. You'd have the sidebar of Arc, you'd have the memory of ChatGPT Atlas, and you'd have the research of Comet, all in one. Dia is trying. You can import your ChatGPT memory once, but until it updates automatically and syncs both ways, it's not quite connected. Now, I know some of you are thinking, what about privacy? The reality is tools like Perplexity, ChatGPT, and Dia all get better with the more context they have. That context comes from you, your clicks, your writing style, your workflows, the same way your phone or Spotify learns your preferences over time. But that doesn't mean you're handing over your private data. Most of these browsers give you clear controls to manage what's remembered or stored. And when you use them intentionally, separating workspaces between personal and work and avoiding sensitive sites, you stay in control. Think of it like working with a doctor. You can get generic advice like eat healthy and exercise, or you can share your history and get something that's truly personal. That's how AI gets better, by understanding you. And honestly, it's the compromise you have to make to get a glimpse into the future. Now that you've seen what AI can do in your browser, what about the tool that you spend hours in each day? Your email. Watch this next to see why some pros ditch Gmail and what they use instead.